Hey everyone, it's Isaac from True Champion Gaming, and today we have a good deck. Uh, this is a budget deck, but it is a good deck. Uh, you know, we wanted to, we, we understand that like getting the Grand Archive sometimes can be really expensive, with stuff like Gildas at 35 bucks, stuff at, you know, uh, Dungeon Guides at like 25, GCRs at 50, Carters at like 60, you know, there's a lot of expensive cards in this game, and it can be really hard for a new player to just want to play with friends or whatever and, you know, not invest, you know, a hundred, two hundred dollars <laughs> just for a decent deck. So we wanted to do our best to build a deck that would work, that you could play with friends, and you know, still play at locals or even a store champ and probably still take it down. Um, so let me just jump right into it. It is Wind. Uh, you know, Wind is a deck that has a lot of tricks, really good allies. This is a allies based deck. And, uh, you know, Wind is in a little bit of a rougher spot compared to the other classes. You know, Fire, obviously, seems to be like one of the best. Water is really strong as well. Wind is lacking in the competitive scene to see, you know, where it's at. But it does have Wind allies. So we are playing Wind Spirit. And then we do run level 1 Diana. So this is, like I said, a Wind allies based deck. But we are running Diana, so we are going Wind Ranger. Um, not just because we you know, want to be different, but because there are some decent tricks that you can do with uh, specifically Diana that allows you to still push a lot of damage on board easily. So we go level 1 Diana, doesn't do anything at the start, but does give us that class bonus uh, when we need it. And then the real card, uh, level 2 Diana, um, you know, when the real champion comes in, uh, you get the lineage release uh, level 1 now and also get that bullet. And if she's ever distant, uh, she also gets plus 2 attack. So Level 2 Diana, very good in this deck, obviously, because we get that those free materializations uh, online as soon as we hit level 2, which two of them are uh, Prototype Pistol and Quick Draw Piercer. So these are our two guns of the deck. Um, Prototype Pistol, pretty simple. You know, it comes out, it's a 2-3 attacker. If you have a bullet, then, you know, it's only a 1 attack bullet, then it's dealing 3, that kills an ally, that pushes damage face. If it's a uh, plated bullet, which we'll get to in a second here, um, you know, it's pushing 4 damage. So very solid card there. Um, quick Draw Piercer, you know, this is a, it's like I said, you know, in the, in the intro, GCR is hard to come by in a cheap deck. Uh, GCR being at like about 50 bucks, maybe even more sometimes. Um, it's hard, you need as much draw in an ally deck as possible to recuperate the hand all, with all the allies you're slamming on board and getting rid of, rid of from hand, that card loss. Um, and quick draw piercer, once it, it goes to the banishment, it draws you a card. Now, there's different ways you can actually put quick draw piercer into your banishment that isn't just getting rid of it and using the durability, which we'll get into later. And so uh, it, you could get more value out of this in certain ways, depending on scenarios, but not always. Usually, it's just going to break and draw you that card. We do run two bullets. We run, like I said, plated bullet, but we run turbulent bullets. So turbulent bullets are really solid um, regalia bullets to run in your deck because while it is only one attack, it is going to buff two of your allies' attack by one. So technically, it's like a three attack bullet, if you will, when it meets the requirements. Um, and, you know, if you have three, if you have two, uh, yeah, three drop two threes on board, or basically anything with two attack, this can buff them up to three and then trade into the three attack allies really nicely. Um, that's a huge benefit of Turbulent Bullet. And then Play to Bullet, it's the bread and butter of, you know, a lot of Ranger decks. Don't leave home without it. It's a really solid card. With Prototype Pistol, it's swinging for four, so very nice card there. And then, kind of talking about more draw on the deck, we do, of course, run the three bobbles. You just gotta run the bobbles, uh, especially in a uh, budget deck. You need to have all three. You know, some people have been running just water and fire because those are the most prominent decks to play against. Uh, but since we don't have GCR anyway, you might as run well run the wind bobble as well. And then uh, again, like I said, we don't run GCR, so we are running Life's Essence, Essence Amulet. Um, you know, it's like a delayed GCR. A lot of times, one of your allies is going to die at some point, uh, and this is a really solid way to gain value back from that. And then we run Tariff Ring. Um, you know, Tariff Ring is so good against the ally v ally matchup, like I keep mentioning, and also it's good against uh, things like Fire Ranger. When they go into level three and they really just lose all their cards from hand, having something like Tariff Ring, uh, where you can pop it in the recollection if you think they're gonna do that, uh, to stop you know, a Carter from swinging and clearing your board, or from then hitting it even your face is really, really good. And then before I jump into the uh, main deck, I do want to bring up some a couple of announcements. We have pre-orders of Mercurial Hearts uh, in our store. So uh, go ahead and go to our website. Uh, I think we already are out of Sylvie and Tristan deck boxes, or the, the deck collector box. Uh, but we do still have cases and boxes. Uh, you know, we, we match the market price as best as we can on everything. I think we're actually at, at the lowest we can sell them at. So 
uh, please buy them from our shop. And if not, uh, if you just want to buy cars from, let's say, TCG Player, we actually have a uh, link for that as well, link down below. So if you're buying any kind of cards, whether it be for Grand Archive or not, or if you want to buy this deck specifically, uh, use our link below, add all those cards to your cart, and it helps us get a little kickback as well. And then finally, uh, we do have our Dragon Shield uh, partnership. Uh, and if you want to buy Dragon Shields, you know, we use them at tournaments, we use them in testing, we use them pretty much everywhere we go. And I'm probably assuming you do too. Uh, click the link down below to go to Dragon Shield's uh, website and use our code TRUE5 for a special discount there that also, again, gives us a kickback. And then that's all the promotional announcements I have, but we also are running 8-Man Pod uh, win a box in our Discord. So if you just want to get some practice, if you want to play this deck in a tournament uh, kind of format with, where we do run with all you know judge rules and all that kind of stuff, it is a $10 entry, but you do win a box of either DOA, ALC, and then eventually when it comes out, we'll, we'll be running uh, Mercurial Hearts in those as well. So that's all I have for announcements. Let's get to the main deck. All right, so it shouldn't be any surprise to anyone that we are running uh, a bunch of two threes. And stuff like Train Sharpshooter is not an odd man out when it comes to ally decks. And if we're running, you know, Ranger, then yeah, we're going to put the Ranger 2-3 in. But this is basically even better in our deck because this is our Gildas. Um, Gildas is a very expensive card. Like I said, it's like 35 bucks. So if you want a play set of them, it's like $140. Uh, so having something like a Train Sharpshooter where you can give it distant and while you are Ranger, it then becomes a 4-3, which is the exact same power as our Gildas is in other ally decks. So this is a more important card. Now don't get hung up on always trying to make that work and like putting everything you have into making that work. But if it does happen, like I said, we do run a couple cards like make it distant, um, then definitely go for it, obviously. And then we do run more two three, three drop two threes. Um, Steam Knight, we're not getting that class bonus, but you know, like I said, three drop two three, very good. Um, the stat line is just so strong right now. We do run Lurking Assailant, a better three drop two three than a Steam Knight. Um, this, of course, has stealth while it's awake, and then it always has that level one, uh, you know, allows you to retaliate against uh, an attacking unit, even while it's not the one getting attacked. Um, that's very, very good. This allows you to either help kill off any allies, or if someone is just going for face and you just want to get an extra 2-3 and it's at the end of the turn, like they're, depending on how they, you know, format their turn, this can just poke a little damage back, and even, you know, if someone's not playing around, it can cause them to die to lethal just from that 2 attack. We run Imperial Recruit. Um, Imperial Recruit is a, you know, uh, basically a two, uh, two attacker, three uh, health ally, but only for two. This is a very, very strong ally. If someone is attacking into this repeatedly just to, like, you know, uh, not get it fostered, you're honestly pretty happy with that because then it's doing its job essentially of soaking up damage into your face. Um, or if they are targeting this over other stuff, again, that's fine. It only costs us, you know, two. We're probably putting down something else on the exact, exact same turn. Um, and if it ever becomes foster, which honestly it does pretty often because people are usually killing off the three drop two threes first, um, this is essentially just becoming a two cost two three, and that's insane value in this game. And then we do run two scavenging raccoons. I mean, I mean a lot of people aren't playing around this card nowadays. They might be playing against a uh, deep uh, sea sprite diver. Um, for that, you know, card uh, banishment from their graveyard. Um, but, you know, Erupting's a thing. Uh, floating Memory is definitely a thing in this game. Uh, Fire Ranger uses a lot of Floating Memory. This is a very good card. Just eat a lot of their Floating Memory out of their graveyard, and it makes it harder for people to level up. And like I said, a lot of people aren't playing around that. And then we do run four Lone Gunslingers. So, this is a kind of an odd card. It is floating memory for uh, and it's a one cost one one with floating memory. Um, you know, if we have that turbulent bullet, you can just like put this on board. It's such a cheap card to put on board that um, we're gaining that value of uh, that one extra attack. Uh, if, especially if you have only one ally on board, so now you have two allies on board. And if it dies, you're okay with it because it's floating memory allows us to get to level two or whatever might be uh, quicker. Um, so very solid card. Also it works with Asin, which we are running in the deck. Uh, and then we do have two Seeking Shot. It's for your ally matchups. Uh, it's really good. We actually, funny enough, do get the class bonus if we are uh, level one, uh, where we can't be retaliated against, which could come up just, you know, helping saving you health. We do run two Backstep, and we also are running a four uh, suite of evasive maneuvers. Um, backstep, you know, is essentially, you know, if we're holding up three cards in hand, one of them being evasive maneuver, one of them being a Backstep, and we do have that trained sharpshooter on board, 
Um, you know, if they don't attack it or don't kill it, you don't want to just minus one card from hand. So instead, you can actually just backstep it, and now you're at least replacing that card from hand uh, by playing backstep. And so you're not losing any value by giving your sharpshooter distance. But you are only running two because most likely we are just trying to save it to give it that distant effect. And then we'll move on to the win cards. Like I said, we are running a four Asin. We do have that lone gunslinger. We do have a couple of two drops. Um, and so Asin can come on board pretty easily. Um, also, just it's a huge body. You know, a th a th regardless of the four cost, it is a three four. Um, and three four is just really hard to remove in this game. We are running Dream Fairy. Should be no surprise to anyone. Dream Fairy, very good. Gets rid of Majestic Spirit if you're against the Merlin. Gets rid of, you know, a lot of allies and makes them really hard to play. If they have a Ghost of Pendragon, they played it, you can bounce that back to hand, and now they can't play that, can't keep getting value. If they're playing Carter, uh, you can, and they, you know, it swung, but you were able to stop it somehow, um, then you can Dream Fairy the Carter on your turn, and now they can't play it. A lot of Fire Rangers actually aren't playing Seeking's ri Seeker's Rifle in uh, their main. They may play in the side or might not play it at all, and so they actually have a really hard time clearing Dream Fairy unless they have a Carter, and if you Dream Fairy it, they don't have one. We do run four Shimmer Cloak Assassin, um, just a very solid card. Again, hard to remove. If they waste their uh, Seeking Seeker's Rifle uh, attacks on removing these, they don't have anything for Dream Fairy or vice versa. Two Trained Hawk, it's for the you know those annoying stealthers like a Shimmer Cloak Assassin, like uh, Dream Fairies, like Snow Fairies. Um, very good stuff there. If you're able to get an extra attack on it, can kill an Awake Lurking. And uh, you know maybe that's just enough value you need to help swing the game into your uh, favor. And then the last alley we'll play is four Swift Recruit. So four Swift Recruit, you know, floating memory, stop, can block an attack from an, another Ranger, something like Fire Ranger. I keep mentioning Fire Ranger, it's because it did do really well at more uh, recent events. Um, you know, that, and take a look on the Nationals, a lot of the Fire Rangers are doing really well. A lot of, you know, uh, Water Rangers are doing well uh, as the ally also match up. So, you know, stops attacks there, stops the ton Tanaris, you know, big swing attacks. Um, so, intercepts, really, really good. We do run four attune with winds, uh, with the winds, uh, buffing up your stuff. You can, if you can buff a, uh, Shimmer Cloak Assassin, that's insane. It's so hard to remove that. If you can buff an Asin, even harder for people to usually remove that. Five health is so big in this game. Um, so attune with the winds, we do run four of it. We have a decent amount of allies, so we do want to buff them. For Zephyr, um, you know, this has so many tricks with it. Uh, a lot of things people don't know about, a lot of just like intricacies that allow, you know, to get value off of this that people weren't expecting, whether it be to save your own ally or whether it be, you know, you swung with Quick Draw Piercer and you hit and it only has one durability. And so instead, you know, maybe it only had one durability when you swung with it. And so before it hits, you Zephyr your Quick Draw to get that draw, but your bullet's still gonna hit them. So you're still gonna get the plus attack. And there's just a lot of value you can get with Zephyr. And then favorable wins. Um, you know, if someone's sleeping for three, uh, it can block. I mean, you have a lot of three, you know, three health units. This blocks that. It is just floating memory. So if you just need to go to level one, you just usually burn it. If you're just trying to save something, you know, if you at that again, that ally v ally matchup, this can do wonders for you in protecting your board. So uh, favorable favorable wins is very good. And we did build a sideboard for this. Uh, you know, sideboard cards. They can change, depends on your meta, depends on your area, what kind of events you're going to, whatever. But we are running an additional Seeking Shot. You know, if you're in that ally matchup and you're having trouble just clearing off their stuff, Seeking Shot, another Seeking Shot is not a bad card to have. We do run two Song of Nurturing. Honestly, this is a card that definitely could be subject to change depending on how much people are sweeping for. If you notice someone is playing a four full of sweeps, um, you might just run Song of Nurturing if it is actually helping you get above that threshold of whatever they're sweeping for. Whether they're sweeping for three, or they're sweeping for five, uh, if sweeping for six, you're kind of out of luck usually unless you have stuff attuned uh, or comparing, or you know, joining it up with a favorable or another Song of Nurturing. Um, but we do run in that in there for the sweeps. We do run a Smoke Bombs, protects our board, helps get around taunts or intercepts, you know, if we need to, to help, you know, push more damage, what have you. Replaces itself, not a bad card to have. I have Argus, again, we don't run two trained Hawks, but you know, you you could always use more True Sight <laughs> when it feels like it, when you need it. And this is like an on-demand True Sight that's really helpful. Again, replaces itself. And then we do run Blast Pump Shot. This is another gun. Um, if you're finding that this would be really helpful to help clear off more allies, you know, 
when it's uh, paired with plated bullet, it is swinging for three, so you're able to kill two things, uh, two, three, drop two threes off board or anything with three health off board. Or if they do have a, a taunter on board and you, or an interceptor on board, you can hit that and then hit face as well. So very good stuff there. We do run tithe, a lot of decks draw a lot, you know, erupting draws a lot, Merlin draws a lot. Tithe is a really nice card to have. Again, it replaces itself. You have that extra floating memory. It's a plus. You're not going to draw that much uh, because we are limited on, you know, because we are allies, essentially. <laughs> and then, finally, Safeguard Amulet. Fireball, uh, Rise, uh, even Luxum. This is just, you know, a really, really good defensive card to have against them. And if it is game two, then you're taking out the bobbles and you want something to put in its place. So, that's all I have for you guys for that deck. Like I said, it is going to be worse because you can't run Gildas and you can't run GCR but if you already have those obviously pop them in but this is not a bad deck by any means it is a really good it, you know wind allies is still very very solid you still are going to be able to take games you are going to be able to win within the first like four turns just because people just aren't going to see enough defensive cards to stop you uh, so try it out let us know how you think if there's any improvements any little tweaks that you would make to make it better let me know down below and then always we'll see you guys in the next one peace